All right, hey y'all. Hey, hey y'all. How's everybody doing? Good. Y'all's good. Everybody's good. Praise the Lord. Ah. <laughs> <sighs> Well, I'm going to uh, read you a few scriptures and then I'm just going to talk to you and then we're going to close out in prayer, okay? And because uh, that's all I got. I don't have much for you today other than what you've heard pretty much all your life if you've been in the church about the Great Commission. Is that right? The Holy Spirit is to help us to fulfill this commission. Is that correct? Holy Spirit helps us to walk out what? The Word of God in our lives. Is that correct? Holy Spirit sanctifies you, does He not? He's the Spirit of wisdom, knowledge, and the fear of the Lord, which means the reverence of the Father. Correct? Scripture does say in 1 John 4 that greater is He that is in me than He that is in the World. So that takes away every excuse for us to die to ourselves and to glorify the Father in our flesh and in our mind, does it not? So it all comes down to choice, does it not? Yeah. Have y'all been listening to me? Have you? Yeah, yeah. Am I saying anything that's not correct? So it is your choice to follow, right? Your choice to choose life or your choice to choose death. It's only two, life or... And to get life with him, you must... You must die, yes. Makes sense, right? Is this confusing? Yeah. This is believing Christianity 101 and we stay there because we're all children. When you start graduating to something greater, then you're going to forget the basics and the very foundation, which is the Messiah, which is Jesus. Is that right? Everything we build on is built on the foundation of Christ, on the Messiah, on Jesus, on Yeshua. Is that correct? Okay. So if your foundation is not built there, then what? It won't stand. It's not of God. Correct? All right. So from that point of view, I don't know when he's going to drop it on me. He's got some stuff on stirring in my heart. I'm going to have to share it with you. But I'm going to stick to the scriptures that I gave you today. And I gave you in the, should be in the, this thing, whatever you call that. What is that, a program? What, is, what do you call it? What is, what is the correct term today? Bulletin? What, what is it? That thing there with the announcements on it? This one, yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to read, and then we're going to talk a little. I'm going to talk to you a little bit, okay? So Matthew 28, verses 16 through 20, from the complete Jewish Bible. So the 11 Talmudin went to the hill in Galil where Yeshua had told them to go. And when they saw him, they prostrated themselves before him, but some hesitated. Yeshua came and talked to them, and he said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, therefore, because it's been given to me, you go and make people from all nations into what? Talmud, into disciples. So to go and disciple, is that what he's saying? Immersing them into the reality of the Father, the Son, and the Ruach HaKodesh, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I will be with you always, yes, even into the end of the age. So when they asked him what the great commandment was, what did he say? To love the Lord your God with all your what? Heart, soul, mind, and strength. And the second is likened to it, to love your as yourself. Correct? Okay, Mark 16, let's keep going. Afterward, he appeared to the eleven themselves as they were reclining <laughs> at the table. And he rebuked them for their unbelief and hardness of heart because they had not believed those who saw him after he had risen. And he said to them, go into the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. 
Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. And they will speak in new tongues. They will pick up serpents with their hands. And if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So, then the Lord Jesus, after he had spoken to them, was taken up into heaven and sat down on the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the message by accompanying signs. So when they obeyed, the Father did what he said he would do. Is that correct? You see anywhere in the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation where he gave a command or something for his people to do it. If they did it, he didn't back it up. Anywhere. Do you see it anywhere? Okay. Remember we talked about a little bit about the condition we're in and why we're in the condition. I can't blame it on the God of this world. I can't blame it on anybody else but us who calls ourselves the church because we're ultra divided. And the house divided against itself cannot Stand. I keep saying it again and again because the scripture says it. So I keep repeating it. Why? Because the scripture says it. And why? Because we are divided. Why? Because we don't stand together. Is that correct? You can admit it. It's okay. It's the truth. So how are we going to get to the point where we stand together for him? Focus on him. Get our eyes off of our selves. And what we think is right and just do what this says. Okay? Make sense? I told you, I'm not going to be before you long. I'm going to talk to you a little bit. Maybe preach to you a little bit. I don't know. But I'm going to let it flow how he wants it to flow. But you need to get this message because we're running out of time. We are out of time. Since the, the church or the body has been birthed, we're supposed to have been discipling and equipping people for the work of ministry. That's what we're supposed to be doing. But have we been doing that? No. Why not? Ego. Lazy. A plethora of reasons why not. This is good business now is what it has become. Our lives are supposed to be changed by what we hear from the word and what we believe. Is it not? Is that not the truth? I went to uh, a Thursday evening. If you looked at it online, I canceled the Thursday evening equipping services because that's what I call it, an equipping service. I canceled it and had them put the flyer out so everyone could go to uh, the prayer that was given at another ministry that was put on by uh, oh, Bridges. Thank you. <laughs> oh, man. What I saw there, there were what, at least five messianic rabbis and some pastors that came together. And what was the purpose that they came together? They came together to pray for Israel and what's going on in Israel. I was like, wow. So I'm sitting there and I'm taking in what is going on, and I'm, I'm watching because I'm always paying attention. <laughs> and I want to know why the Father puts me in certain places and what am I supposed to learn. When I got home, I was thinking about uh, when 9-11 happened in, in New York, when the planes hit the, 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 twin, the towers. And I remember during that time after that tragedy happened that there were droves of people that started going to church that never went to church, didn't want to have anything to do with it, but they went. And guess what happened? I can tell you what happened. They didn't find the father there or his spirit. And after a little while, 
they went back to doing whatever they were doing. Is that how the process is supposed to happen? He says that we're supposed to what? Disciple. Is that right? Is it my responsibility? Would you pray for somebody to disciple them or yours? It's yours. Let me be clear. It's yours. You are the church, not the building. They may not want to come into the building. So you meet them where they are. Take time out of your schedule and minister to them and disciple them and to make sure they learn what is true. Because God, they were attracted to the Spirit of God in you. Hello? Am I making sense to you? Quit fighting the Holy Spirit. It's how he designed it. I'm not telling you, I'm not giving you any revelation. It's how he designed it. I didn't design it that way. I'm coming from the scripture. Am I not? Okay, so listen. They came together because of the tragedy. And I have two people here that I adopted to pray for that are missing. So I keep them dear to pray. Then yesterday, I went to a, uh, well, it was not a service, but they were outside and they were feeding people and they were giving out food to those that were less fortunate. And there were like five or six pastors there working together to try to complete the commission. I learned some things yesterday that did set well with my heart. I haven't wept yet, but I know it's coming. It was a good thing for me to sit there and to stand there and to watch what was going on. These people working together to do the will of the Father. And why it was it touched me so much because I don't see it a lot. But I should see it all the time. It should be common. And I, we took a walk. Three of us took a walk and we walked and prayed. And we were praying for people. And we got to uh, another ministry that was going on. And we went there and just prayed with them. And there was a fight that ensued. And and a whole lot of things going on. And I'm like, wow, 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 wow. And I'm looking at the chaos. And I'm looking at people that, some people that, people are there to bless, and yet they still have attitude. They're still acting out and doing crazy things. The police had to come to that particular gathering and uh, they didn't do anything. They weren't able to help anybody because the two guys were gone after the fight. But what was amazing was this ministry was not allowed to do anything on the grounds of a church because the church didn't want them there anymore because they didn't want those type of people coming around. I won't mention the name of the church, but no, <laughs> we'll not mention the name of the church. That's why I say it's not the building, it's the people and you have to be the church. So we can stop conducting business as normal, which is not working. How come we only come together in tragedy and cry out to God? Why don't we come together every week and cry out to the Father? Why is he not moving in our midst every time that we gather in his name? 
again in his character, in his authority. I'm wearing my Bamba socks because Bamba's donated some socks to us to put in the bags for those less fortunate than we are. And the River of Living Water Ministry, one of the ministries that was there yesterday, donated a whole bunch of stuff to us for the Love Your Neighbor packages so we can continue to give out and touch the community. If you don't know it yet, or you haven't gotten it from me yet, you haven't heard it from me, you have been called and set apart to glorify the Father on this side of glory while you draw breath. And if you haven't been doing what he's asked you to do up until this point, today is the first day for the rest of your life. Repent, humble yourself, and be about the Father's work. What are we waiting for? Yeshua to come? He's already come. When he comes again, he will come to gather what? Those that are his. He says who's his and who's not, who is not his. Who belongs to him? Those who obey him and keep his word. Who don't? Those who don't. You're either bearing fruit or you're not. Is that correct? What am I talking about, fruit? I'm talking not only talking about fruit that's in your character, but your obedience, just like it was for Israel, had to become, they had to become obedient to him and their obedience after a while because of a love for him. There was first fear, and then there was a love for him. We're supposed to be motivated by love because he's so loved that he gave himself. He so loved that he gave himself. When I think about where I have come from, that he would even call my name is a miracle. Do you understand this? Me standing here is a miracle. Not of anything that I have done on my own. I should have been crushed and destroyed. You ever heard the expression, but God, but God. And I promise you this, if you begin to obey him and submit yourself to him, all hell will break loose in your life. But you must remember, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. We overcome by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. What does that mean? We must speak the language of the kingdom and nothing else. Because if you speak something contrary to the word, you invite darkness into your own soul. You do it. Are you hearing me? We're out of time. People are dying. They're lost. In despair, the harvest is still plentiful. The labors are still few. Remember Ezekiel. I bring him up again and again. When he told Ezekiel, I'm going to give you a word. I want you to go speak it. And if you do not and they die, their blood will be on your hands. But if you do and they die in their sins, their blood is on their own hands. What does that mean to you when I say that to you? You can't hide anymore. You must be about your father's work where you are. And for those of you in your mind thinking, what can I do? What can I do? What can I do? Stop. Just let the glory of God shine in you where you are. Start there. I, pro I guarantee you right now, some people that are listening to me, somebody is coming into your mind right now that you should have prayed with or at least tried to pray with them to talk to. A simple thing like that, praying for someone. Do not speak your opinion. Speak what the Word says. 
This whole world right now, this whole country and nation, everything is about what people think and what they can identify with. This is your truth. You don't have to have an opinion, just agree with the word. I get questions all the time, and I'm like, well, that's not what the word says. Well, what do you think? I think that the word is true. I'm sticking with that. Do we have anything else? <laughs> Been teaching you, reading to you about the Holy Spirit and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. We cannot do it without Him. He is the one that convicts you of sin. Is he not? He gives you the power to do what? Walk in holiness to glorify the Father. Paul said it, and we read over it a lot of times. He said, if you walk in the Spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the... So is it possible not to be led by the lust of the flesh? Is it possible to walk as Yeshua walked? We're supposed to be conformed to his image. What does that mean? I'm never going to get there. Do I have to sin? Let me ask you this question, and I'm going to ask it from my own experience. I'll, I'll say this. I'll just make a statement. I have never, ever committed a sin and it didn't come into my mind first. And I reasoned and I thought about it and then I did it. Even though I knew it was wrong. I'm the only one? Okay. <laughs> so I had a what? Choice. Didn't I? I could have did like uh, Joseph did. What did Joseph do? Pew! Homeboy said, I'm running. I'm getting up out of here. <laughs> My flesh ain't strong enough for this. I'm going. <laughs> huh? I'm going to talk to you. I'm not going to get into it today. I'm going to shut up here in just a few minutes. But we're going to talk, and it's going to be after the conference. We're going to come together, and we're going to talk about the baptism of the Holy Spirit briefly. And I'm going to give you an opportunity to be baptized in the Holy Spirit if you want. I'm not going to make you. I'm not going to try to prod you into doing it. You've had enough information to know that you have needed this baptism because it separated them for service. Even the disciples in which he breathed on, sent them out. They did miracle signs and wonders. He told them to go and wait for the promise to come that he had been talking about. And they went and they waited. And we all know what happened when we read it. Hallelujah. But then after that, then the church, the true church was established. Not that church that was established in Rome that mixed everything together, all the systems of belief. And let me just say that about systems of belief, which is interpreted religion, all of them have an element of truth in them. They do. Because they got an element of truth that comes from the same source. How do you think the enemy is able to deceive so well? Because he has to mix a little bit of truth in with his deception, with his lies, to make it deception. Understand this, all he knows is God because he was created. He's not a creator, not omnipotent, not omniscient. He's not. He's not all powerful. So he knows the truth, and he well knows how to manipulate it as well. That's why every, every system of belief has an element of truth. We're going to talk about that in the coming days as we're talking about the spiritual warfare, and I'm going to reveal some things to you, man, I maybe never said before. But I'm going to say them out loud. I'm going to put it out there because you need to be aware what is going on around you. And one thing I'm tired of seeing, I'm tired of seeing darkness being able to come into the body when we gather together and be comfortable there. 
While you're praying, they're praying. Shouldn't be that way. Hello? Not when we come together, when two or more are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst. Well, you say that God is with you always. I say that as well, and I agree with you. But I said, Father, you mean something else. What is it that you're not telling me? When we gather together in his name, right? He says, I am there in the midst of you, which means when we're all in agreement and all focus on him, he manifests his glory. Just like he did in the church in Acts. Did he not? Hello? You're not going to put no denomination on me. I'm a son of the living God. That's what I am. Period. Hello? You want to be like-minded with me? Get the mind of Christ. Hello? All this division, all of this. Oh, we have been set up to shut up. I'm not going to be quiet. Will you stand with him and not be quiet? For those of you that have been quiet, will you begin to open up your mouth and speak what is the truth? And don't be like the crazy people I've seen on the street too that are trying to preach. The, yeah, you got to be. You got to. You got to go to hell if you. Gotta, what is that? Sandy got to be Sandy. Bernard got to be Bernard. Because there's somebody that likes her flavor, somebody that likes his flavor, somebody that likes Dave's flavor and, and their personality and how they talk. And that's the person that they'll minister to. That's the person that they will disciple. And then we'll get together and boom, let him have his way in us. Get marching orders to go out and to do what we're supposed to do next. Is that too simple? If you're sitting and listening to me, I am not going to tell you it's okay to just sit in the seats and leave here and do nothing. I'm not going to tell you it's okay to, to be who we've always been and what we've always been taught to do because we've taught to do nothing. All I was ever taught is I was a sinner. I'm always going to be a sinner. I'm a sinner saved by grace. How productive is that? But I've learned from experience how to overcome. <laughs> I'm going to teach you everything that he has taught me if you're willing to accept it. Because I want you to go from here and be about your father's work. Okay? Okay, pumpkin? <laughs> Huh? I'm done preaching at y'all. Uh, if you want to come up to pray, I will pray with you. And uh, Dave, you can come up and do some more worship if you if you want, if you will. But I'm done preaching to you today. I don't have any more. But let's do this before we close, because the Shema is all about what. It's about unity, isn't it? Isn't the Shema about unity? Shema Israel, Shema. What, what are we talking about? Being what? One. One God, one people, one. Right? So let's do that. Let's close with that Shema. Right? Shema Israel. Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Eloheinu 
teaching and information, visit us online today. Come and be a part of our fellowship. Here at The Seed, enjoy worshiping and learning God's Word with us.